My name is Christina Copingon. I'm a board certified family nurse practitioner and a certified nurse midwife. I'm also the CNM site director. Um, I was at at the hospital um, and just sort of sitting there talking to colleagues. Um, we had delivered all of our patients and I, code orange was called overhead uh, from the ER. Um, code orange means that a patient is delivering somewhere in the hospital um, that's not in labor and delivery. So myself um, and one of the other uh, physicians and nurses from labor and delivery went to the emergency room and the, uh, usually the patient has either already delivered um, or is in the ER. Um, however, this so we were looking for her in the emergency room. However, this patient was outside in the car, along with pretty much the entire staff of the emergency room um, who were around the car. Um, and when we told them that we were there from um, OB, uh, they moved out of the way and the patient was sitting upright in the front seat of the car with the fetal head already delivered. Um, so I attempted to deliver the baby with gentle traction like we uh, normally would, um, but the baby did not deliver. So I tried to reposition the patient to facilitate better delivery, um, but that was not possible um, given the car. Um, so I placed uh, one finger under the fetus's like posterior shoulder, the axilla to help facilitate rotation. And the baby came out immediately thereafter and was crying in pink and everybody was ecstatic, including the patient. Um, so at that point, I just clamped and cut the cord, um, handed the baby off to the waiting NICU team who was out there with an isolate. Um, and then had the patient get out of the car, uh, put her in a stretcher, and then take her to uh, labor and delivery. This was her third baby, um, so this she was this was not her her first time delivering a baby. However, her first time delivering a baby in a car. Um, um, once we got her to labor and delivery, um, you know, did the normal things. We got her into a bed, collected cord blood, and um, delivered the placenta. Now that we were in a room. Um, and, you know, inspected her perineum and everything was intact. We notified her, she was receiving care with a community physician. She was not one of our hospitalist patients. Um, so we notified him that she had delivered and he was on his way, but uh, both mom and baby were healthy and doing well. Um, usually that's not the norm. Uh, like I said, usually a code orange is only called overhead for like a drill. Um, usually if a patient is delivering somewhere in the hospital outside of labor and delivery, it's usually the ER, but the patient has already delivered in the car and then arrived to the emergency room or has delivered upon getting into the emergency room. So the charge nurse will usually just call one of us and say, hey, um, there's a patient that's delivered and we're going to bring her over. We're not usually um, delivering patients actually in the car. Um, so that's, that's not the norm. Um, but it was a good thing we were there because this was not a straightforward delivery. Usually the baby's just going to come right out. However, the, the head delivered, but the rest of the baby did not um, come right out with normal maternal expulsive efforts and required a little assistance just to facilitate uh, delivery of the shoulders. Hard to say if it was a shoulder dystocia or not because the patient's sitting upright in the car and we weren't there for the, yeah, we weren't there for the delivery to see what was, you know, going on, but it's a good ending. So the patient said she lived close to the hospital. This was a quick onset of labor. She broke her water at home and started contracting. And so she was like on her way to the hospital. And then she said while she was on her way to the hospital, she started feeling like she had to push. And so she just pushed to deliver the baby. So it wasn't something that had been going on um, all day. And so the charge nurse and then one of the nurses from labor and delivery came. Um, the physician that was on call with us that day was in the middle of doing something else. So obviously they did not come with us, but we, you know, if we had needed them, they, they would have been available. But in the almost 10 years that I've been there, this is the first time that I've actively delivered somebody in the car. Many times I've delivered somebody, you know, in the ER or has already delivered and then come over. But this is the, this is the first time that someone's actually delivered, needed to be delivered in the car and then moved to labor and delivery. Um, so this is a perfect example of how having OBHG in-house in, you know, and having two of us available um, is wonderful because mom and baby were able to be delivered without any sequela to either one of them. And it wasn't a straightforward delivery. And then mom and baby were fine. You know, they went home on day two like they normally would if they had just delivered in the hospital without an issue. So 
but these are things that happen, you know, we'll get called for a delivery, you know, they'll be like, someone will just start screaming down the hallway, my name or whatever. And I'm like, I don't even have a patient in labor. What is happening? It's somebody else's patient delivering. You go in there and the patient's like, you know, the baby's head's already out and you're just like, oh, okay, just throw me a pair of gloves or whatever's available so that I can, yeah, just so I can do this. So, and then, but it keep, that's what keeps our job interesting as well as, you know, rewarding because you're like okay this is why why we're here right to do the best for moms and babies and to make sure that they both have the best outcome possible even if the situation is not the most ideal